I found myself at home one week at night. My parents went out of town, and I was returning from a canceled sleepover at my friend's house. The lights were on when I got to the door, and I remember getting a phone call from that same friend shortly thereafter, which would end up being the last normal event of that night. My brother was playing video games in the next room, and I could hear him tapping furiously at the video game while I spoke on the cordless phone. I walked around in the living room and ended the phone call in the kitchen when I remember hearing some sort of high-pitched squeal that came from the house somewhere. I couldn't place where it came from as it sounded the same in every room I went to investigate. It ended about a minute after it started and was interrupted by the phone ringing. But the phone wasn't in the kitchen where I left it. It was in the bathroom on the counter in front of the sink. I answered the phone and there was no one there. So I hung up. It was at that point I heard a dragging sound. Like a large heavy object was being dragged in the attic crawl space above me. I followed the sound as it slowly navigated from room to room and ended up in my parents' bedroom, who at the time still had a water bed. After the sound made it to the far wall, it stopped and the phone rang again. And this time it was my friend on the other line. I told him what was going on and he told me to be careful and call the police. After I got off the phone, I laid down on the waterbed. I then heard a knock on the door and answered it quickly, but no one was there. It was at this point I called my brother from his room to check something out. I stormed into his room and there's nobody there. His bed was made and his room spotless. Neither the console nor the TV was on and the controller was wrapped and unplugged. There's no way he could have hid and cleaned his room in those few seconds it took me to make it to his door of his room. I had been alone the entire night, hearing for 20 minutes straight my brother playing his game that he was not present to be playing. The phone rang again, but again, it was not where I left it. This time it was resting on the kitchen counter where I originally left it. So I walked through the entire house to answer it. It was my friend calling again this time saying that the call was dropped for some reason and he was trying to call me back. I explained to him what just happened and I heard another knock on the door. Since I was standing right next to it, I peeked through the window within two seconds of the knocks and there was nobody there. At this point I opened the door and stepped out to the porch to make sure I didn't see anyone running away as I had a large wide open yard and there's nothing to hide behind. I walked into the front yard and looked around, but couldn't find anything. I found myself engaged in several more minutes of talking to my friend before I got off the line. And it was at that moment where I realized that the place I had been staring at while I was talking were two very large black reflective eyes looking back at me. The figure was tall and lanky and stood about 10 feet or so from me. The most notable feature he wore was an inhumanly large smile and he was grinning with oily mechanical teeth from literally ear to ear. (laughs) Despite me staring directly at him for more than five minutes, I pretended that I didn't notice him and through willpower alone, made it back inside the house without running as fast as I could. Instead, I walked calmly. I remember feeling like if I ran, he would chase me and somehow knew that he would have caught me easily. I barricaded myself in my room for the rest of the night but did not fall asleep. The sun came up the next morning and my parents were home. Nothing like that ever happened before and nothing like that has ever happened since. The first time I came face to face with this strange man was about seven years ago. It was a normal summer day. My mother was struggling to make ends meet and we lived in a really crappy two bedroom house. It was my mother, her boyfriend, my two younger brothers and myself My mom worked nights and so did her boyfriend, so it was up to me to watch my two brothers in the evening. It was just like any other normal summer day at first. My friends and I hung out during the day, walked around our small town, and enjoyed the warm weather. Now, for being a small town, there's still plenty to do. Walk through the woods, go to the park, all of the typical kids things. We decided to waste time at the park until I had to go home and watch my brothers. It was normal boring stuff. We walked around, 
played with a basketball that someone left behind, sat on the swings and talked about our lives and what we were going to do when we got older. It was nearing 3 p.m. when I noticed a guy sitting on the bench over by the basketball court. Now, it was nearing the time for me to go home anyways, and as the man was giving me and my friend both the odd vibe, we decided to leave. As we neared Main Street, which my house also happened to be on, we parted ways. I got home, and my mother lets me know that there's leftovers for the boys and myself, and then she's on her way to work. We spend most of the days indoors, watching TV or playing video games. Around 7.30, my brothers wanted to go outside to ride their bikes. It's just now getting dark, so I agree. They ride their bikes for a half hour. I'm sitting on the curb looking at my phone, texting my friend about how bored I am. When my youngest brother, who must have been around 7 at the time, comes up to me and points over towards our house. I look just in time to see what looked like a man walk inside. I immediately tell my brothers not to worry and continue riding their bikes as I call my mother letting her know what just happened. She calls the police and they show up within 5 minutes, seeing that the police station is only a few blocks away. They do a full search of the home but find nothing. They speak to my mother on the phone and tell her there's nothing there and it must have just been our imaginations. Tentatively, my brothers and I go back into the house. So I sit them down and turn on the TV. Time flies and I look up and it's already 9.30 and I really got to get them to bed soon. I head upstairs to go into our closet. All three of us share one bedroom, so all of our clothes are in one closet. I turn the closet light on and start digging through a pile of clothes on the floor that we never got around to putting away. I hear a noise that sounds like a deep breath. Thinking it was just my imagination, I continue to pull out pajamas from my brothers. I grab their PJs and go to pull the string to turn off the lights. Out of the corner of my eye, I see movement. I look over and see a face peering out of the large pile of clothes. There's a man hiding under our clothes in the closet. He made a sudden movement, and I booked it. I take off running. I can hear him struggling to get out of the clothes, and I didn't stop running. Down the hallway, down the stairs, knocking anything over in the process, in hopes of slowing him down. I burst into the living room and grab my brother's arms, practically pulling them out of the sockets in an attempt to drag them out of the house. We were outside and three blocks away before I quit dragging them behind me. I reach for my phone to call the police, but it's not in my pocket. I must have left it on the couch. So we hoofed it. I drag my brothers behind me in the middle of the night. They are tired and they don't know what happened and I won't tell them. They didn't need to know. They would never want to go into that closet ever again. I get to the police station and they call our mother. Then they drive us home and she leaves work early. They do another full search but once again find nothing but the mess I made in my attempt to leave. No evidence. Nothing. They basically told me to stop wasting their time and they left. My mother said she believed me, but of course I knew it was just something she would say to console me. She says I could stay the night at a friend's if I can get a hold of someone, just to make me feel better. We all go inside, and my mom sends my brothers to get cleaned up for bed. I walk over to the couch where I left my phone. It wasn't there though. It was on the floor smashed to pieces. It was very obvious that it was smashed by a hammer, seeing as the hammer was sitting right next to it. I call my mother over and show her the mess of my phone on the ground. She walks over to the storage cabinet and pulls down the toolbox we have. She opens it and our hammer is still inside. I didn't realize what that meant at the time, but now that I think about it, that man was in our home, in my closet, in my room, with a hammer, just waiting and hoping for me and my brothers to fall asleep. Let's not meet again, please. This happened in early 2017. I was a 23 year old girl and had just finished college. The field I studied was not huge in my area, so I decided to leave. I moved to the biggest city in our country to make a post-graduation course and look for a job. As I was still unemployed, I decided I would wait to make a long-term rental contract, worrying about a possible bad commute to work. In the first couple of months, I was switching from Airbnbs and hostels all the time. I was already tired of this. I decided this would be my last move and then, with or without a job, I would settle. 
I was running out of money and decided to stay in a dorm in a hostel next to where I was taking classes. Sharing a bedroom is not a problem to me during a trip, but when you're living somewhere, trying to create a routine, sharing a bathroom with some complete strangers just sucks. I would share the dorm with three guys, but it's not with any of them that my bad encounter occurs. They were nice, apart from one of them snoring so bad at night. No biggie. In another dorm, although, was the creepiest person I've ever seen. He was in his mid-thirties, and he was not traveling. He was native from the city where we were in, and was using the hostel as a new house since his parents kicked him out of theirs. <laughs> he introduced himself and tried to be nice and flirty with me. I was polite initially, but declined his advances. He wouldn't stop. He started following me all day long in the hostel. Anywhere I went, he would show up in less than five minutes. On the second day there, I left the hostel to a job interview, and by the time I arrived back to the hostel, late at night, he was seated alone on the front stairs, waiting for me. He told me this like it was the most natural thing on earth. He would buy me snacks, ask me out, try to get information about my personal life. All these things, when I already made it clear of my lack of interest in this friendship. All this happened in three days. I was exhausted of his presence, but what I didn't know is that it could have went worse. As soon as one of the guys that was sharing the dorm with me left, he asked the hostel staff to switch dorms so he could stay in the same one as me. Obviously, he didn't tell me this, so imagine how surprised and disgusted I was when I saw him coming into the dorm with all his belongings. I was so scared of his presence that I slept wearing jeans to avoid any sort of advantage that he could take while I was sleeping. The very next morning I decided to leave. The situation had got worse and I couldn't handle it anymore. While I was packing the guy showed up, noticed what I was doing and started to cry, asking me not to leave him. Then to make things even more creepy and disgusting, he told me that he would miss seeing my face while I was sleeping and thank god that he had taken photos. I was trying my best to stay calm, but I lost it when he told me he had taken pictures of me while I was sleeping. I took his phone out of his hand and asked him to see the pictures and deleted all of them. There were a bunch of photos of me sleeping in the night before. I left the hostel and I really regret not reporting him to the staff. Crazy lonely dude in the hostel, please, let's never meet again. <laughs>